Hi there, and uh, welcome to this episode of uh, Totally Unscripted. Um, I'm delighted um, that we've been able, uh, via uh, VPNs, proxies, <laughs> uh, and various means, to be joined by uh, Jordan Ray, uh, who's based in Beijing in China and has done a ton of stuff within the education uh, field. And uh, for us on this on the show, he's 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 doing a lot of that with Google Apps Script. So hi Jordan, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. So um, today we're gonna uh, let Jordan show some of the projects he's gonna uh, be or has has been working on. So today, we'll, uh, Jordan's going to talk about teachers as maker. Makers coding with um, Google Apps Script, but before we do that, we thought we'd just go through some uh, news and community things, just to, to flag some bits and pieces that have uh, come out. Um, so, um, in terms of news, I think uh, there's been a couple of things. So, uh, this was kind of dropped on everyone. Uh, everyone I, I've spoken to has heard nothing of about this until. Um, it, it's come out. So I don't know if, if people are familiar with Google Data Studio. It's uh, a very simple web-based visualization. Uh, it, you can tool, you can make dashboards. Um, there was a set of data inputs that you could use as part of Google Data Studio, but um, it was announced, I think, a couple of days ago uh, that there's now uh, these community connectors. And I think the interesting thing for the App Script community is that these community connectors are uh, created with Google App Script. So I think it's um, more evidence of uh, Google App Script proliferating kind of the, the Google infrastructure. So I think it, you know, in terms of long term sustainability of um, Google App Script, I think it's a, a, a very positive thing. So what the community connector does is basically allow you to create um, data connections with any any data source, so any data source that you can uh, get access to or generate with um, Google Apps Script, you can plug that into to Data Studio. Bruce, I, I know you're quite interested in uh, data visualization. Is this something you've had a chance to play with, or is there any immediate ideas that uh, come to mind with you? Uh, one of the, th the one of the uh, things that I noticed was that the I've uh, just come back from the GDD conference in Poland. Um, and there was a massive interest in Data Studio from people that were coming by the uh, office hours, which was the place that people could come and ask about what's going on in App Script. Um, and what it was really about was to do with uh, being able to do reporting more effectively than you can do in, in App Script because the uh, you know with sheets and stuff it's not not, not that great. So um, I think we'll see a a, a, a lot more um, take up of that now that it's become a lot easier. So I think it's a great. Great development, and there was a quite a big interest at GDD in it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I know Real has um, Real Nutterman. He's had a quick play with it, and uh, I, I can see Jacobs. I think asking about the ver verification side of the community connector. Uh, so Real has said that there is a, a different authentic, and he, he said it it's nice. Um, so um, I think. As part of this, the the app verification uh, issue that or feature that we have now is isn't a problem. I don't know if you you know anything different. Yeah, well, yeah. What 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 I'll do with it, in fact, is I'll I'll do a, probably do a little video this month and and put it out there so people can get started with it. It's easy to get started with. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Real was at the GDD summit as well, and he he actually showed a few things with it. It was pretty good. Excellent. Jordan, I don't know if data visualization is, is that something that interests you or um yeah, a little bit, absolutely. I I, I work with spreadsheets all the time. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm uh, with D three was one of the um yeah. uh modules in a free code camp that I was when I went through that course. Uh, I think there's a lot of D three fans out there. So um uh so just uh, some other things that have kind of popped up in AppScript. So uh, the new document add-ons list. So um, uh, this is something that uh, Remain uh, 
picked up and uh, flagged with the community. So basically, it lets people, other editors in the document to see and easily enable um, add-ons that are being used in the document. So they might have not uh, originally activated those, but they can see see them listed. So um, that seems to be a nice development uh, in terms of you know enabling add-on developers to to grow uh, their their user base. Um, so a nice nice little feature to come out there. Um, something that Steve Webster picked up is uh, that the uh, prediction API. I think this is uh, a machine learning uh, set of recipes that you can uh, you can access via an API. Uh, that's deprecated, so that won't be available now after um, uh, April next year. Um, I, I wasn't. I haven't done any work with the prediction API. I don't know, Bruce, if we, you'd looked at yeah, it. Yeah, I've used it. So what it is, it's a kind of, a, as you say, the machine language, and and the idea is that you uh, train it to know that uh, these values go together, um, and therefore it's able to predict what an answer will be um, given and some inputs. So in fact, it's. In some ways, you could say it was a precursor to TensorFlow, you know, because it's really, mm -hmm. and really uh, one of the big things about Google right now is all about the AI. So you'll find that the prediction API is going away, but you'll be able to use much more powerful APIs um, to replace that and do much cooler things. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing lots more of that. So it's not really a surprise it's going away. Um, it yeah. just means that you've got to learn how to do um, some new but cooler things. Yeah, and the uh, the link will share the slide, so you can get all these links. Uh, the documentation there is is basically directing people to what you need to to switch to on that. Um, so that was kind of what what's come out from kind of the official Google uh, channels. But there has been quite some a number of interesting community things that um, we thought we'd just spotlight. So uh, the first one uh, from Kanchi is a, a OneDrive library. I think, Bruce, you've, you've played around with OneDrive authentication before. Yeah, so so um, this was about oh, quite a while ago now, maybe about a year ago. Um, I'm, I made some some scripts that allowed you to um, take, a, let's say, a sheet on Google Drive and, and transform it and copy it to OneDrive. So it's just a... There's yeah. an OAuth library component, and then there's using the Drive API um, as well. So this is this is kind of similar. Yeah. So uh, this library will let you make calls. I know quite a few education institutions actually run uh, Office 365 in parallel with um, um, uh, G Suite. So it might be something that interests them. Um, certainly, it's something that um, uh, we've we've just got in Scotland. So. Um, yeah, absolutely, especially in China here, where Office 365 is, it seems to be kind of leading the, the pack. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is, so Microsoft being more favored in China than, than Google? Well, everyone loves Google. I think the, the services provided by Google are, are superior. Um, however, the school schools tend to run into these problems where at school you can use Google Apps and Google Docs, Google Sheets, stuff like that, because the school might be running through a, a VPN or proxy. But then when students go home for the night, they might not have the same services set up at home. Uh, so those the collaboration is great to use in the classroom with with those tools, but um, in terms of sending stuff home, you got to rely on Office 365. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting, uh, I really haven't used uh, the Office 365 suite of tools very much, yeah. really until moving here. Okay, that's interesting. That's about a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, OneDrive library is there for you. Um, so, this was um, Eric Carlito, is at, he's a Google developer, so it's nice to. I'm not sure if he's still on the Google Apps Group development relations team, um, but uh, he, he still contributes bits and pieces. So um, he, he flagged a, 
uh, object spreadsheet mapping library. Um, so um, what this does is it makes it easy to um, you know have a, a table of data and just query it. So you know you can pull off things based on a column value or uh, you know a row. So there've been various ones of these. I think Bruce, you highlighted a couple of um, ways that you can objectify um, Google Sheets in the past. Have you had a, a chance to look at this one? And no, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't looked at that one yet. To, no. Um, it, the codes on GitHub uh, is quite well documented as well. So there's a, a number of examples there. Um, so um, uh, I think Eric's right. It, it, it looks quite nice. Worth a play if you, you get a chance at some point. Um, so uh, next one is. Um, uh, Jonathan Broughton, who has been contributing to Google Apps Script for a number of years, um, he's um, uh, he's following you, Bruce. <laughs> he's uh, he's he's wanting to uh, uh, distribute more of what what he's doing. So these are um, I haven't had a chance to look through these yet, but um, he's he's published a, a repo uh, custom functions. So um, I think these are uh, sheet functions rather than uh at script functions um but uh, bruce did did you get a chance to look at this i know you've been busy for the last week with out no, i haven't i haven't got around to that yet yeah. i only saw, only saw it this morning actually yeah i will i will do uh so thanks for that jonathan and something related to that um just to flag um Andrew Roberts was interested if there was any sort of kind of Slack slash another uh, kind of channel that could be used for uh, to chat through. Um, I think there have been a couple of attempts at this, and they haven't, all of them haven't really got that far. So I'm aware of a, a Slack Google Apps Script channel. Um, Jonathan Highlight. There's a, a Gitter one as well, um, but uh, there hasn't been much activity on that. Um, I, I, for me, it, it uh, uh, I think Andrew's very. I can see him in the YouTube chat. He's very keen for people to to get into the the, the Gitter community. Uh, it, I have to say, in my own personal kind of development, I, uh, I I'm quite happy with the the Google Plus environment. Uh, so far for you know posting questions but I, I don't know jordan do you, do you use channels like slack do you do you think there should be more for google apps script in that area um i haven't really uh i i haven't really stack overflow is the majority mm -hmm. of the um google apps scripting you know questions and talk that i uh yeah. uh that I that I get to take part in. How about how you? But you I've used Gitter a little bit. Right. Yeah. So so in fact, I I joined uh, Andrew's Slack channel. I think yesterday just to have a look at, see what was going on there. But but personally, I'm mean, obviously you've obviously got Hangouts as well, which is mm -hmm. you know, fairly immediate. Um, from my perspective, I want to control. Um, the amount of time I spend dealing with stuff, and you know, obviously, if you if you post a lot of stuff in there and you got people contacting you all the time, um, including wanting to have a hangout with you right right mm -hmm. right there and then, and people you've never heard of. So, um, like you, I prefer to space out a little bit and yeah. all allocate a certain amount of time to deal with it, rather than it being as async as asynchronous, if you like, mm -hmm. as these chat things can be but you know they, they do have use if you've started a conversation with yeah. someone I think I think it's good to have a place with which you can do it um, a lot better than the you know post and wait approach yeah. that you have in Google Plus and everything but um, I don't like the idea of initiating um, asynchronous conversations on, on on things like that because you know people, I mean apart from the intrusiveness of, of it it actually disappoints people if you can't mm. do that long participation yeah. So I'm t I'm in kind of two minds about it, quite frankly. Yeah. Well, we'll see where it goes. Um, 
Sorry, Jordan, you were going to say something. I would, I would totally agree with the, the need to kind of centralize mm -hmm. conversations among places. Super important for me, where especially it's not this isn't my primary, you know, function in the day is is coding. So when I when I want to look when I'm doing stuff with App Script, I want I kind of need it to be in one place. I, uh, mm -hmm. I can't look all over the creation for it. I think these things need a, a, a critical mass as well, so it can be quite quite hard initially. But um, I think if we've got some enthusiastic people in the community maybe oh um uh, and, and we, we do have very enthusiastic people in the community maybe um something will come of that um so the last thing bruce was um uh you've you've got a uh, uh to your portfolio you've got another uh uh add-on that's um uh, available in the store and you've got uh, a couple of links there do you want to talk a bit to that as well yeah, so the the I mean, obviously there's there's lots of add-ons out there, but I wanted to make the point that uh, open sourcing add-ons is a pretty good thing to do um, because it gives it gives people who don't know how to get started with complex add-ons somewhere to go, um, you know, because they can install it, see what it looks like, see what it does, and then say, well, I wonder how you do that, and then go 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 and get the the open source of it. Um, and I guess the other part of it is that this one uses the slides API, which is a fairly complicated one. And mm -hmm. if you want to get started with it, it's a little bit off-putting. So again, it gives you a kickstart on this. You know, a lot of people publish publish add-ons, but don't open source the uh, the code. I I tend to open source all of mine. I I, th I think you know people are concerned that maybe there's a monetization opportunity that they're missing mm -hmm. by not open sourcing it but quite frankly it's quite difficult to make any money off the uh, um, the add-on market in any case so you know it's you got to think about whether or not you want to to do something for the for the buzz of doing it or whether you think you might yeah. want to it will make some money out of it so I would highly recommend people who are writing add-ons to or in fact any code that they feel should be public to make it public and everybody will benefit mm -hmm.